my judges are ready. Wonderful. The year was 2014, November. The Mentor High School football team had just been eliminated from the quarterfinal round of the season. That night, I brainstormed a way to bring revenge to the Hudson High School team, who had taken away our chances for a state title. I devised a plan to infiltrate the student section of St. Edwards High School, Hudson's next opponents, to oppose the Hudson team. And like any teenager with a plan, I tweeted it and began communications with a St. Ed student section leader. Within moments, a Twitter brawl ensued. My peers did not want to support St. Ed's. St. Ed's did not want our support. And the Hudson team began attacking me for coming across as a sore loser. By the end of the night, the three schools had entered a three hour long thumb war. <laughs> a thumb war that taught me a lesson about the importance of keeping my digital presence clean enough that I would pass the rotary four way test. To those here who doubt the importance of keeping a clean image on the internet, I am here to tell you that the digital footprint each one of us creates is just as important, if not more important, than the legacy left by our daily lives. Let's examine this idea with the rotary four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Is it the truth? A digital footprint can start with a tweet, a tweet that can affect a group of people for better or for worse. When an employer or admissions counselor is preparing to interview a candidate, oftentimes they will view the social media pages of the candidates to gain a first impression of them. A New York Times article entitled, They Loved Your GPA, Then They Saw Your Tweets, explains that 31% of college admissions officers view the social media pages of prospective students and 30% of those interviewed said that they had found information that had negatively affected a candidate's prospects. Clearly, the digital footprint has significance, and the truth remains that we should all put our best foot forward on the internet, or we will suffer if we don't. Is it fair? Imagine you are a college admissions officer or a college coach looking at two candidates. Both have equal abilities and good grades, but one has a questionable digital footprint. So which one do you choose? According to one Mac school recruiting coordinator, the decision is easy. As reported by the Chicago Tribune, the coordinator explains, most kids don't realize social media is open to the public. They don't seem to understand that scholarship offers have been lost because of what we've seen on social media. If students would keep their internet image above reproach, then the academic and athletic playing fields would be level, and students would be judged fairly based on their academic and athletic merit. Let's look at one more student example. The New York Times reports that publishing company Pearson Education has been monitoring social media pages to ensure that no test questions have been leaked from the Park assessment test. Pearson Education had to notify New Jersey state officials that a student photographed and tweeted a test question during the test. The state officials asked the school that the boy be disciplined. Pearson explained, a breach includes any time that information about a test leaves the classroom, whether in casual conversation or posts on social media. Our goal is to create a fair test for everyone. Each student should have his or her chance of taking the test on a level playing field. Will it build goodwill and better friendships? The digital footprint I left that evening was an example of a negative consequence of not maintaining my digital image, but was not nearly as bad as what happened to Alicia Lynch. According to the Boston Globe, Alicia posted a picture of herself in a Halloween costume, running gear, a road race bib, and faked bleeding gashes from her head, arms, and legs. Her costume? A Boston Marathon runner. She was in no way prepared for the viral media storm that would hit. She received death threats and eventually lost her job. I believe my situation could have gone far worse had I not handled it the way I did. While I cannot erase the footprint as quickly as I deleted my tweet, my next steps taken were steps taken in the direction of goodwill. By apologizing to and congratulating the teams of Hudson and St. Ed's, goodwill prevailed and anger subsided. Mentor came closer as a school that day as well, and I'd like to think that the way I handled the situation with patience and kindness built better friendships amongst my peers. Lastly, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Ladies and gentlemen, the benefits of maintaining your digital image is vital to the society we live in today. Because we value our social media presence, we should maintain the integrity of our digital first impression. 
Consider one more example reported by CNN.com. A prospective Cisco employee tweets, happy news, Cisco offered me a job. Now I have to outweigh the utility of a fatty paycheck and the long drives in hating the work. Unfortunately, another Cisco employee saw the tweet and responded, who is the hiring manager? I'm sure he'll love to know you're going to hate the work. In a world where many first impressions occur online, we should use social media accordingly, setting out a plan to ensure that each digital step taken is a step taken in the right direction. Take nothing but pictures. Leave nothing but footprints. A simple creed, but one with great importance. The truth is, your digital footprint is your profile to the world. So prepare to be judged fairly based on how you use the internet. Use social media to highlight positivity and encouragement to promote the goodwill of others. And lastly, benefit yourself and others by setting out a plan for social media that displays success. I'm going to work hard to keep my digital footprint clean. My hope is that others will follow in my footsteps. Thank you.